Ciao, I'm Ariana Esposito. And I'm Gary Moretti. Today on Ciao Italia, Cozze. Matthew Moretti and his dad, Gary, are commuting to work on the farm, but not on a highway. They're farmers of a different sort, and their crop of mussels waits beneath the cold summer waters, just off Bangs Island along the coastline of Maine. It's about a 45 minute ride with no bumper to bumper traffic. Time to ponder what today's harvest will yield. Aquaculture is Gary and Matthew's passion, and we get the succulent reward. 60,000 pounds of mussels per raft every year and a half. So right now, with 10 rafts in full production, we're growing over 250,000 pounds of mussels every single year. So we're passing our harvest barge and boat right now. We use this barge to do the heavy work on the farm to harvest all the mussels and to change nets. We have a four-person crew out there working really hard to harvest about a little over 3,000 pounds of mussels today, which is just about our average harvest, two to three times a week, year-round, winter, summer, rain, snow. Each one of these rafts holds mussel lines. You can see the top of the ropes tied to the, the beams on top of the rafts. And then the fuzzy part, the part where the mussels grow, hangs straight down into the water column, 35 feet, where they have the best access to nutrients, food, and are completely protected from predators. And because the mussels are suspended up from the bottom, they never come into contact with the bottom. Um, so they can't get beaten by crabs or lobsters or starfish or any of the benthic predators that love to eat little mussels. This also has another uh, purpose. It prevents the mussels from ever coming into contact with any grit or sand. Um, so you only get a pure bite of mussels, not anything uh, crunchy in your teeth. This also allows the mussels to grow their full potential. We protect them so they don't have to protect themselves, which means they put all of their energy into growing a fat, sweet meat and a, only a thin, delicate shell, which means you get more value out of the mussels you eat from us. Like that. One by one, we bring them down, dump them in the hopper. They get fed up into the debisser. De this is a really important part. This clips the beards or the bissel threads off the mussels. So after they're debissed or debearded, they flow down onto the conveyor where we have a bunch of people <clears throat> inspecting the mussels. We're looking for shape, size. We want to make sure we get rid of anything broken, um, dead, empty shells, cracked. Anything bad, anything that doesn't meet our uh, quality standards gets rejected. And then we do a final hand grade ch -ch -ch, real quick on the table before we bag them, weigh them, tag them, and ship them out to our customers uh, across the country. It's not about your bottom line. It's about are you making a change that's sustainable? Because the, it doesn't... It doesn't work if what we're doing is just a, a flash in time. It has to be part of something larger that sustains itself. Ciao, Gary. Ciao, Marianne. How are, How are you? you? I'm, I'm fine. glad. What do we got today? Oh, we've got all these herbs. They're overgrown. Yeah. I've been spending all my time out on the boat this summer, and I, I've let them go so far. They're all blooming, but we've still got some good. Yeah, so your plums look good. They do. We they can do. actually use that in one of the recipes I'm doing. Oh, you know? let's, let's pull so a few more. Get a couple. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's good. 
What else have we got here? I see you have a little cabbage. We do, we do. Yeah. We, have, well, we have chives, we have rosemary. Rosemary, and uh, I'm glad you, for an Italian, you got to plant basil. Of course, it's so pesto time. It's time to make pesto, and that's just the right size leaf for making it, because you want small oh, yeah. leaves. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, we got to deal with the mussels. I know, okay. we have to. So, let's get <laughs> to the kitchen. Mussels come first. Yeah, let's go to the kitchen. Let's cook something. So I put a little olive oil last night after I cooked all these up. Mm -hmm. well, this is really about seven seven pounds of mussels they're cooked so, and shelled. Yeah, they're so fluffy looking. And they are. What's, it do, what's the reason for the different coloration? Like you, these are orangey and those are... Uh, some just, has to do with male, female. Some of it has to be the time of whether they're going to spawn or reproduce or oh. not, but most of these have already reproduced. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you going to do with them? Because you mean you can eat them just like this. You can. Yeah. And that's the nice thing yeah. about it is that I have them. I'm kind of always expected to have muscles. I can't wait. <laughs> but Sorry. doing the whole, you know, muscle thing um, after all these years, mm. I like to have something really simple. Mm -hmm. So I make some kind of aioli's, a mayonnaise kind of version of aioli last night so that the flavors would bloom a little bit. I made a mild harissa one. Ooh, that looks pretty. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and it's not so biting as the regular mm -hmm. harissa. And this one is a saffron one, a little bit lemony too, um, okay. not too much. But I wanted to make a classic one and show you how quickly I do this. Because it's important to me to get this stuff done so I can spend time with people because um, things are busy, you know, everybody's got busy. Busy, busy. So I generally do a half cup a half a cup of mayo. Oh, and I love this that you don't measure anything. <laughs> That's the sign of a good cook. <laughs> or somebody who's really lucky yeah. sometimes. That's about a half a cup uh, right that's there. That's about half a cup right there. <laughs> <laughs> you stopped me. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to give a little extra to it. You know? I yeah. put a little bit of, uh, excuse my fingers, a little bit of lemon. Mm -hmm. um, I do this so I can catch the seeds. Yeah. About a tablespoon. Okay. And about two tablespoons of olive oil. Uh -huh. um, I like really extra virgin. Yeah, would be the best for this, of course. Yeah. Um, well, that wasn't two tablespoons, but come put on, a, put how a much? little bit more. How much? Give me. Yeah, a little bit more. Okay, good. Now we're now we're there. Yeah. <laughs> That's so the ratio isn't isn't off with my extra yeah. extra mayonnaise. Yeah. And then a little bit of salt. There, that's a quarter, quarter teaspoon. Mm -hmm. there. <laughs> so you're going to serve the mussels with these with these sauces, and the mussels are going to be cold, right? They're they are. Cold. They yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. Which which and with toothpicks. Yeah. So people can enjoy. Right. It's an hors d'oeuvre kind of right. thing. Right. Right. You know? It's perfect. Um, I like to do a couple garlic. I happen to have some pretty fresh garlic right, right now. From um, your garden? No, I wish I did. I mean, you know, I spent so much time working this summer that I wasn't able to do everything that I wanted. Plus, I, I've scaled back a little bit. You know, I don't want to do a, a really large one uh, garden. So mostly I do like a pasta sauce garden. Yeah, because you know? you're out on the boat a lot. I am. Do you I think am. about other new ways to use mussels? I mean, now that, you know, oh, I mean, yeah. this is your livelihood, but you're always coming up with new recipes for them. I, yes, I try. Um, I, I did some undergraduate um, education down in New Orleans, so mm -hmm. I, I was a little bit influenced by uh, the spices and the way that they do food down there. So I made a mussel poor boy uh, oh, recipe. You mean poor boy? Poor boy. Poor boy. <laughs> That's right. And uh, it's oh. it really was fun to do. Yeah. You know, and, as opposed to the classic with, with the oyster, oyster one. Yeah. 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 Were they? Did you fry the mussels? I did. I did. Oh. Almost uh, tempura like. Wow. Uh, just something nice and simple, but yeah. a little kick of cayenne, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, in the and then in the spirit. And of then New you Orleans. stuffed it in a nice. Baguette, right? I did. Oh boy, my mouth is watering already. But this is going to be delicious. Now, if I, if I, um, if I really was going to be picky, I would mash them with the back of a spoon uh, just to bring out the garlic a little bit more. But. Why not? Well, this is good because, you, as you say, people are busy, and so yeah. it's fast. Yeah. And you want something that. Uh, Everybody can enjoy. 
and have a little variety. Right. So I happen to make these ahead of time just so that they'd be right. But I, I would make them in the afternoon and serve them in the evening. Mm -hmm. Now, but, how, did your, how did you start in the muscle business? Wow, that's a really, that's a really good question. Um, I, I was a nurse anesthetist. And in the wow. six months in the year, mm -hmm. I commercially lobstered. Okay. Also, yeah. oh. it was kind of a yin and yang thing, and um, it just felt right, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was always live in my head. It just made sense, you know. This was the, you know, you don't add water, you don't add food, you don't add fertilizer. You grow some of the most pure and perfect food that's possible in yeah. the middle of the water column never touching the bottom, never getting into any of the stuff that we put into the ocean, just the, the best water flow. And it has the right balance of omega-3s and just the, the right balance for everything. So it's a really good food for you. It but is. you know, I think a lot of people shy away from eating mussels because oh, they don't so. know they don't know anything about them they're they're right. they're, you know, they're not familiar with the taste, they don't know yeah. what to do with them. Right, right. But they're really mild and delicious they they're are. not fishy they're, at all no and they're tender and i like to cook them this way and 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 do them cold because they're like little bites of filet mignon or something they're just that's a good way to put it yeah. we should try this filet yes. mignon now that we're here here's a toothpick <laughs> there for you. we go so pick your sauce let's see i'm gonna try let's see i'm going with the classic the classic all right it's great is it good? It's nice and fresh. Yeah. Oh, now mm. I'm going to go for this one. This is good too. Mm. Wow, if you've never eaten mussels, you have no idea what you're missing. Just so tender. That's the saffron one with just a little a little hint of uh, lemon on it, which Ooh, is... That's good. Isn't that good? The lemon yeah. really comes through on that. Don't call anybody else. You and I can finish <laughs> this. It'd be good for us. <laughs> The, the classic Fine. way of making this uh, mussel dish, at least I always thought it was classic, was the um, using a lot of rosemary, shallots, mm. um, white wine, mm -hmm. a little bit of butter, maybe just a little pinch of cayenne to brighten it. That's my recipe. Is it, is it, yeah. I knew I stole it from somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I've got your cookbooks here. <laughs> and uh, I'll cook the mussels, maybe two, three pounds worth. Yep. Um, and then I'll shell them out just like this, but I'll take that broth and I'll strain it. Mm -hmm. And I'll use that to make the risotto. Yeah. Yeah. And the very end, I put the mussels back in. How many pounds, I mean, how many cups are in a pound of mussels? Yeah. It's just as an average. I know it depends on the size of the mussel, but if somebody was going to be making a recipe, they're going to need like mm -hmm. three or four or five pounds, right? It sounds like a lot, but by the time the shell comes sure. off. Sure, And so, different times of year, they're going to be a little bit bigger right. or smaller. Um, this is probably, what do you think, three, three? This looks like about four pounds to me. I mean, in terms of cups, what do you think? Oh, this looks like at least four cups. Four cups? Four cups, Okay, yeah. so you could count on about per pound, cup? maybe three quarters three of a quarters cup. Three quarters of a cup, okay. I really, really love the idea of these sauces. Good. And it's perfect, as you say, for a party. But now, I want to cook something for you with mussels. Please. Okay, so let's get the stuff ready. All right. Okay, so now what we're going to do with these mussels is I'm going to make a potato and mussel salad. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, very Italian. You know, in Italian, mussels are called what your boat is called. Cozze. Yeah, exactly. And in different parts of Italy, it's called something. They they're use, use a different yeah. name, but cozze yeah. is about right. So this yeah. is a classic dish, potato salad. So we need to put the mussels in. Okay. So why don't we do that? that? Yeah, ready for the mussels. All right. So... They go in, and we don't have to do anything with the garlic except put it in whole. Is that enough so, for you? Yep, that's fine. So the, that goes in. And then we're going to need some beautiful parsley. Look mm. at this parsley. Isn't it beautiful? And yeah. I like to use the flat leaf parsley. I do too. Because flat leaf yeah. has much better flavor than, yeah. than the curly parsley. So just take those stems the off. The curly is so pretty. Yes, it's pretty. <laughs> it's nice to decorate a plate. Okay, so that's a that's a good, good amount of parsley. So now I'm going to put the heat on this. This is so easy. We're going to give this some white wine, any dry white wine that you like to drink you can mm -hmm. cook with. So I'm just going to pour in the wine. 
I think a lot of people make a mistake when they're cooking with wine is they go real cheap. But if yeah. you wouldn't drink it, you shouldn't be cooking with exactly. it. Exactly. So now all we have to do is put the cover on, and we're going to wait until those mussels open. Gary, I think we're there. Oh, they're beautiful. You see how they've all opened now. So yeah. now I'm yeah. going to have you drain them. We're not okay. going to save the liquid. You could if you were going to make a right. sauce. Right. But I'm making a potato salad. So uh, let's go ahead and drain okay. those. And while you're doing that, I'm going to work on potatoes. Okay, good. We're going to do like a vinaigrette with this. But they're waxy, so they sometimes stick to your knife, but that's okay. You know, Just recipes once in a while call for waxy potatoes, yeah. and I never know what that means exactly. Well, what this, kind? This is a waxy potato. Anything like a, a Yukon Gold, mm -hmm. a Red Skin, is a waxy potato, whereas like a russet potato is more like a floury potato. Ah, more yes. floury. Oh, that makes sense. So we're going to put the potatoes in a bowl here. I'm get rid of the skin. And if you get rid of that, then the next thing you can do is get me some fennel because I like to put fennel with with this. So that's fennel. Mm, case show everybody what fennel is just in case they don't know. Usually used, you know, in salads mm -hmm. after dinner. And we're going to shave that. So get yourself a nice bulb of fennel. Move this here. And do, yeah, right. That's what I want. This is a salad like this you want to do ahead of time because you want to allow the flavors to mingle. Yeah. And we're just going to do a vinaigrette with this. We're just going to make something with olive oil, a little mm -hmm. mustard, mm -hmm. some of those tomatoes from your garden. <laughs> Plus, I have tomatoes that I brought from my garden. And then some shallot, salt and pepper, and basically we've got it. So, Gary, we got about, out of that four pounds, mm -hmm. this looks like about a cup and a half yep. of mussels. Mm -hmm. So they're all shelled now, and we're going to leave them whole like this, and I'm going to add them right to the potatoes. Oh, right away. Yeah, no. I'm just going to add them nice. right to the potatoes. I don't want to crush those potatoes too much, so I'm just mm -hmm. going to give it a light stir for the moment mm -hmm. and set that aside. So now we have to make the dressing. Oh. We have to make the dressing. I'm going to do that right in this bowl. So what we want is a little bit of shallot. These are shallots. They're in the onion family. And we don't need all of that. Take that piece off and just cut this up. This is milder than an onion, it's isn't much, it? It's much milder than an onion. And it's great for just a dressing like mm -hmm. this. So about, I would say, a tablespoon or so of the shallots. Kind of cut up in little pieces. Oh, well, that's nice. The little yeah, you, you they want, have substantial just, little squares of them. Little yeah, dice you, you want them. a little yeah. texture there. Yeah, but I'm if it were gonna... regular onion, that would be a. Well, big... you could use regular onion too if you wanted to use like a red onion. That mm -hmm. would be oh, nice. Yeah. But all onions make me cry, <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> Even shallots. Even shallots. <laughs> so shallot goes in, uh, and a little salt goes in. Mm -hmm. And now, if you could give me some lemon juice. Um, we'll put have some right here. a couple tablespoons of olive oil Woo! in there. Squeeze, squeeze in, in some lemon. How much? Nah, the whole thing. All right. Okay. Make sure, make sure I don't get the seeds in there. If you do, you know you've got fresh lemon juice. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. Now. And you've got your fiber for the day. Right. There and we now go. we want some mustard. So a Dijon type mustard would be uh, yes. nice. You could use a spicy mustard if you wanted to. I'm okay. just gonna get rid of the lemon. And now we just start to make an emulsion for this. Mm -hmm. We need some tomatoes now. It's so nice to be cooking in your kitchen. Yeah. Gets me out of my own kitchen. Yes. Yeah. Plus I've learned a lot about mussels. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad. I've learned a lot about mussels. It's been really fun to have you guys here. I haven't tried a mussel smoothie yet, but that's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I got a feeling I'm going to get a recipe in the mail one of these days. <laughs> so we're going to add the parsley. And that mustard just makes that a nice emulsion. Oh, I can smell it from here. Yeah, yeah. it just comes right through. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, now you can put the tomatoes in, okay. in here. Because then we have to make another dressing for the fennel. Ooh. So all that goes in. 
That's one good. More. We want, want to give that more? just a little. No, I think that's enough now. Okay. Now we're going to pour in the dressing. Mm. And it's better if you let allow this to sit out for, you know, a good hour or mm. so before you're ready to serve it. Now I'm using a spoon, but normally I would use my clean hands for this to get everything really, really mixed well. Oh yeah, and that, then you wouldn't crush it. You're right. Yeah, because yeah. you could feel it. Yeah. Okay, nice. so we're gonna let that sit aside now. Oh, that's beautiful. And now we need to work with this. So All we right. need more olive oil. I'm gonna get this out of the way so I don't shred my hand. Just a little olive oil for this. Some salt. A dash of pepper. Okay, and we take this, and I am going to use my hands now. Mm -hmm. Just mix so that. So that was just in. olive oil and salt. Olive oil and salt. Uh, A good olive oil. Right. Yeah. And then I just gauge it. If I need a little bit more oil, I just mm -hmm. add it. I think you could give me a drop more salt because my hands are now. Yep. And you don't really need to do much to the fennel because you've got that nice licorice taste to begin with. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. so you don't want to put vinegar on it. Right. All right, so that's ready to go as our bed. So now we need to get the dish and put the dish. this all together. So Gary, we're just going to put the fennel in the base of the dish and spread it out. Mm -hmm. You could do this as an individual serving too if you want, didn't want to do a serving oh, yeah. no, a big bowl. Yep. But just a nice bed of the fennel mm -hmm. like that. And then we have, of course, our potato salad, the mussels. Bangs Island mussels. Look how beautiful this is. And it's so colorful with the That's tomatoes, beautiful. the mussels. Isn't that pretty? And it's not all blended together so much no. where it's uh, all one taste. There are all these bites of taste. This is good. This now is nice. we can add some mussels for garnish, yeah, maybe. Right. You want them just on the side? However you want to do it. They're your mussels. <laughs> Actually, um, these are the ones that we harvested yesterday. Okay. And I took them right off of the line. And a few little lemon slices here and oh, there. Very nice. Just like that. Oh yeah, and this looks like a cookbook. Doesn't it though? <laughs> so we made the wonderful mussels with the three different sauces, the yes, aiolis. Yes, the aiolis. Then we made this beautiful mussel and potato salad. Remember, these are the mussels from Bangs Island <laughs> and they are fabulous. So there you have it. Two great ways to use kotze. Thank you for educating us about how you grow mussels in the ocean, how you harvest them, how you love them, and how <laughs> you do. cook with them. <laughs> Thank you. And today you gave us a good idea. So tell us about what you did here. Well, I, I'm trying to do a simple version of, of mussels that we can do quickly and um, for all kinds of people, all kinds of ways. So what I did was I cooked these in beer, a little Pilsner, mm -hmm. nothing special, mm -hmm. you know, just over the counter beer mm -hmm. and uh, steamed them, picked them. And I did that last night. So they're nice and cool. And then made some garlic aioli base. And this is just the garlic part of it. Mm -hmm. This one is uh, with a harissa sauce, so just a little, little spicy, a little yeah. spicy, mm -hmm. and the other one is with a saffron lemon, and it's just fun. They, they all champion the taste of mussel. They were all delicious, and it's a great Thank idea you. for a party. Very quick, and then you got me thinking about how Italians use mussels in their cooking, and I came up with this wonderful potato salad, and it just makes a perfect cold supper. And it's beautiful, you know, each each bite you're going to be able to taste all of the different parts of it without them blending together into something totally different. Gary, thank you so much for educating us. Thank chin, you. Chin. Thank you. And until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Mariana Esposito. And I'm Gary Moretti. Ciao. Ciao.